This is another short video. Uh, this time it concerns building a silent PC and if you do a bit of research on that and look around you'll see that you can make a silent one quite easily uh, using low power components which mainly means low performance in terms of processor speeds uh, there are quite a few all-in-ones that you can get that are totally fanless. Um, Zalman do some quite nice ones. They're mainly designed for advertising, electronic advertising hoardings rather than actual commercial PC sort of home use and, and business use. But if you wanted to make a machine that had a bit of poke to it, then you can make it completely silent. And if you look around a bit, you'll see that there are a number of components that are available, but one that will catch your eye very quickly is the no fan CR95C the C means it's copper they do one that's got a sort of a coating on it that makes it look sort of bit sort of galvanized and a bit funky that's a little bit more expensive they do the same job just one's more visually pleasing so if you've got a side panel you can get that one this is a big um, fan it's huge. Quite a strange little thing there. I don't think my PC's ever made me do that. So they're, they're exaggerating slightly. They also say it's dust free. Um, so it doesn't pick up the dust over the years. Um, I believe that. Most dust and stuff is put on the fan by the fact that it's got a fan. So the heat sink will collect it because the fan is actually drawing air onto it and that air is also going to include dust particles so the fact that it hasn't got a fan at all it's completely fanless there aren't even any ways that you can mount the fan that I can see um, obviously you could probably fit one if you wanted to but you might have to bodge it and it would make the width a little bit too much for the case but that's that's a fairly sizable object as you can probably gauge um, especially when I compare it to the size of the RAM that we're going to be using that's HyperX Savage RAM. There are reasons why I've chosen that. And the purpose of this video hopefully will show you the limitations of the parts that you can choose if you did want to use that fan. Because I don't think they're particularly clear. So hopefully this will help you. I'm also going to be using an i5 4570S. The S is the, the low power consumption model. Don't be put off. I think it's slightly cheaper than the equivalent 4570 uh, and in terms of performance they are virtually the same. This one is slightly slower. The graphics on it take a bit of a hit. I think the graphics on the S are, according to the benchmarks, probably about half what you get on the 4570. Presumably by doing that, that's the main way to get down the power consumption and the heat generation. It's got a DP Hang on, a TPD, which is thermal design power, that's what that stands for, of 65 watts compared to uh, 84 watts for the plain vanilla 4570. Uh, the actual fan is rated up to 95 um, watts for the TDP. Um, what TDP is essentially is a number that Intel generate based on the, the average power that the processor dissipates when it's running at its standard frequency um, whilst running a set Intel range of applications and basically a stress test. So they run the Intel test and that generates a number and they run the same test on all their processors um, and TDP is the number they get. So the plain vanilla i5-4570 has 84 watts and this has quite a lot lower of 65 watts so in terms of giving yourself a bit of overhead and a, and a bit of um, extra sort of comfort if you like the 64 the 65 watts is very much less than the 95 that the fans rated at so we shouldn't get any issues at all with it overheating even if it's running at full whack so you can get quite a high performance PC that is actually silent. But <laughs> the 
reason you're probably watching this is what are the issues with that fan? Can that fan fit on the motherboard that I've got? So what I'll do is we'll slide a few things out of the way and we'll get the fan unpacked. I've cut the seal, but I haven't taken it out yet. We'll get the fan unpacked and we'll take a look at what we've got. And it is quite nicely packed. I'll just check that you can actually see that. That is um, one of the biggest fans I have ever seen. One of the biggest heat sinks I have ever seen, I should say, because there's no fan on it. Um, if I keep saying fan, it's because I'm normally used to saying, you know, HSF heat sink fan, so I normally just say fan. So just, you know, <laughs> bear with me a bit. I will keep calling that fan, even though it hasn't got one. It is massive absolutely huge it surprisingly doesn't weigh as much as you might expect it's not a solid lump of copper these are, are quite intricate heat pipes it is an incredibly well designed thing um, it is very effective I mean the, the purpose of this video is not to give you any of the tech specs for it if you're watching this it's because you've actually decided that this is the one you're going to go for but you're worried about whether something will fit so let's crack on with that if we compare it to the processor box, you, you get an idea of scale. Because you'll be able to, you know, everyone's seen a processor box, a retail box. Intel only sell them as retail products. So you've got an idea of the scale. Um, obviously, the other reviews have got the actual measurements and things. So you can, you, you know, you've got a pretty good idea how big that fan is. But what you're probably going to be concerned about is that. How much space have I got? How far out does it reach? Are there any conditions about what RAM I can use? Are there any conditions about what motherboard I can use? None of the reviews I've seen are helpful. Hopefully this video will be, which is why you've watched up until this point. <laughs> so let's carry on. We get the motherboard out. It's the Z97S SI Plus from MSI. Again, um, I haven't opened it. I broke up the seal and I've already fitted the processor just to save a bit of time so the 4570S is essentially the same as the 4570 the graphics aren't as heat generatory I suppose they, they, they be, whether they've been throttled I don't know but if you look at the benchmarks on the various processor comparison sites you see that the graphics takes a bit of a hit um, but this isn't going to be used for gaming, this is just going to be used for standard stuff. The main speculation um, for this was um, can, I, can I have a completely silent PC please? And the answer is yes because I'll, I'll build you one so these are the bits I've chosen. Uh, the Kingston RAM is a very nice RAM, it's 16 gig. Uh, if you look at the website for the fan you see that it specifies that there's 40 millimeters I think that you can have for coverage um, in terms of RAM height so the, the sort of the Corsair funky stuff with the big fins on it no that isn't going to fit uh, again it does depend on the position of the RAM slots compared to the, uh, their relative position compared to the um, processor socket but generally speaking they're quite close so this will overhang a little bit um, I'll be taking the fan I'll say it again I'll be taking the heatsink off so you can see that so that's it gone I'll take one of the RAM sticks out and I'll fit it uh, for dual channel on this motherboard it goes in the black sockets I think I thought it would be the blue ones, but it's not, it's the black ones, it goes in two, for two sticks it goes in two and four rather than one and three. So that's that ram in. If I then position the fan, the fan needs to be that way around. You can see that it fits. I'm going to just stop filming and then restart it because I'm going to take the camera off the tripod. 
and we'll have a closer look and take some measurements. Camera's off the tripod. This is the bit that you're probably most interested in watching. There's the motherboard heat sinks. Quite chunky, quite pretty. There's one stick of RAM fitted. This is uh, obviously standard size RAM with a heat spreader fitted. The heat spreader is pokes it above, a little bit above the conventional size of traditional RAM chip. It's not Corsair Dominator by any means, but it's obviously not a standard measurements for RAM. So if I bring the heatsink in and put it on top of the processor, remember there is the plastic film still on the bottom of the heatsink. It's not thick, but it's still there. Um, at first glance, we have plenty of room for the motherboard ones, and we have a nice bit of room for the HyperX Savage. If I get a ruler, and we'll take a little measurement. If I measure from the... it's a bit blurry, hopefully it'll, it'll manage to zoom in on it. If I take a measurement from the top of the motherboard to the bottom of that, it isn't, by my eye, four centimetres like the manufacturer suggests. It's about 4.8 centimetres. They say it's four, you can have four centimetres clearance. Um, I don't think that's entirely true. I think it's more about 3.7. So if you get RAM that's 3.7 millimetres, then you're going to be okay. If we do measure this stick, you can, I think it's probably safe to assume that the sockets are going to be the same on every motherboard. There are some variation, but the actual height of them and the way they work is going to be pretty similar. So if we're looking at actual RAM, if you measure the RAM, this RAM is 3.5. 3.3? Is that 3.3? I'd say that's 3.3. 3.3 centimetres, or 33 millimetres, and they say you've got four centimetres of clearance. So if you get RAM that's about 3.8 as a maximum height, it'll fit and you're going to be fine with that RAM. Um, so Corsair Dominator's out. Anything with large fins on it, which essentially is Corsair Dominator, is, isn't going to fit. Um, it obscures, on this particular motherboard, it obscures pretty much three of the four sockets. So there's no way you're going to get the large heat spreader RAM in. It just isn't going to fit. Not a problem because this does perfectly fine, and of course it, it's um, still performance RAM, and it still fits. The obvious question that follows this is: What about the ATX mounting holes? What well, if I put the processor heatsink on the right place? They actually want it to be that way up, I think. So we put it that way up, so we're no fan thing. Or is it that way? I can't remember. Let's just put it like that, so it looks pretty for the purposes of the film. Looking at the ATX mounting holes, not obscured. Looking at the ATX mounting hole, mm, little bit obscured, but you should be able to get a screwdriver in there and screw it on. Overhang over the top edge, little bit of overhang over the top edge. So if your power supply is mounted at the top, then it's going to be a bit flush. Most modern cases, to be fair, have the power supply at the bottom. So realistically, uh, this shouldn't be a problem because those kind of cases also assume that you're going to put a fan at the top. So there's usually a bit. So yeah, it's going to be that's going to fit that way. No problem at all. Obviously, it's well within the range of the ATX in other areas, so it's going to fit in the case. In that sense, if I then go to that screw, not a problem obviously, but this one, yeah, that one's a bit squished. So if I go down to it, you can see that's the screw that's going to be the problem. If you've got a positive screwdriver, or a bendy screwdriver, or just a screwdriver that works at an angle, then you can obviously screw a screw in at that angle, but if you try and do it completely perpendicular to the motherboard, you can't see the screw hole at all so there is some obstruction there which might potentially be a problem so if you wanted to mount this outside the case and then fit the motherboard in um, you need to be aware of that and maybe a bit careful if you want to fit it 
when the motherboard's already in the case, then that's going to be fine, but you will obviously need the cutout panel on the motherboard mounting tray so that you can do it. Um, I suppose the worry is, this is a big cooler, how heavy is it? Well, I think I've mentioned in the previous video that it doesn't feel that heavy. I've felt heavier ones. Some of the older ones were big lumps of copper. This, uh, These are heat pipes, so I think they're hollow. Um, they might have sort of a fluid in them, I don't, I'm not really very sure how it works. Obviously you can read reviews that go into detail. This the purpose of this video is to, let, is to give you a practical demonstration of what it looks like when you go to fit it, so that if you are worried that your RAM might not work, you've at least got some numbers to use and some measurements to take to verify that before you purchase. Um, because sending things back is a bit of a pain. Um, I think that's probably it. Obviously, if you've got any questions, put them in the comments. I hope this video is helpful. Um, I'll probably do another one once I've actually got it in the case, just to let you know whether I had any little tricky difficulties with it. But as a general rule, it's, it's a great cooler. And if you want to make a silent computer, then this is the one that you're going to need if you want to make that computer have some performance. Um, thanks for watching.